here you see the beating heart, in a sense, of the mathematical physics division. Uh, what we do is basically cook up models for describing quantum systems, but this model takes a lot of computational power to be crunched. We need final numbers that we can compare to experiments. We don't have such a cool experimental environment as some of our colleagues, but we are proud of our little server machine and messy computer room as well. Oh, hi there. Mathematical physics. I've always wondered what they're doing. Let's have a look. Follow me. Hey. hey. And how are you doing? Good, Good to see you. you. Let's I have a look. Come in. Yeah. I heard you had something nice planned for us today as well. Yeah. Um, Talk a little bit about mathematical physics. So we're talking about mathematical physics. It sounds far away, but we have a couple of bright young kids coming and discussing about how mathematical physics enter our lives. And uh, so hopefully we will engage with, uh, with the public about this distant subject. That sounds awesome. I'm curious to learn more about it. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Enjoy. Hello. Hello. What's your name? My name is Oscar. Oscar. And my name is Andrea. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So I work with your dad here at the Division of Mathematical Physics. And um, you had some questions about mathematical physics. Yes. So I wanted, I also have some questions. I, I put there a, a picture. Yes. Uh, do you see anything familiar in that picture? Can you guess anything about what's in that picture? It's a bit uh, strange picture with, with uh, plenty of different stuff. If I it. have to be serious about this, I think Green's function, whatever that is, that actually sounds like something that the air pressure is going up and down and like uh -huh. at different speeds. And this one where quantum many body systems, I already know this one. There's circles in circles in circles in circles in circles. Just my hand, it has circles in it and it's more circle in that circle and more circle in that circle. Like, I'm basically just trying to say that this is basically what I am. The one in the center, it's what you are, right? Yes. It's, it's an center. atom. Uh, that's the representation of an atom. And maybe you recognize that. So um, these are all different stuff that we do here in this corridor of mathematical physics. For example, the one in the center, the atom that you were talking about, that's yes. what we are made of, as you said. So it's a, it's a structure where at the center of it, the structure there is a nucleus that is very heavy and on, on the most external parts there are electrons. So we are made of nuclei and electrons and the interaction between nuclei and electrons binds us together, make us really, and make everything that you see. We have done this at school. I think our teacher, his name is Robert, he's uh -huh. a very nice guy. He said this to our class. There was this thing that he says, a lab that was in, I think it was, it started here in Sweden. It got to switch and I think it was, I think it was, I don't know, Paris too? I, I have no idea, but it was, he said there was one really big lab. Yes, yes. And in a the lab they, they made so big science. <laughs> he exactly. said he said this that they've tried to get different molecules, whatever this is, and crush them into each other yes. and see what happens. Precisely. Yes. And he showed them all up on a screen. And the one that was he said that they have different numbers, because I don't know how strong they were, but he said that seventy two was not there. I think it was seventy two or seventy three that wasn't there, because they hadn't find that high number. Yet. So that's uh, what you are. What I think you are describing yes. is exactly the atomic structure. So we are yes. made of these very very small things yes. with uh, that are on, on, on in turn made of electrons and nuclei. Now the problem is that you cannot see that uh, yeah, in, uh, with the naked eye, you know. Yes. And the only thing, the only way you can really yeah. really see and study them, it's by smashing them one into the other. In this way, they collide. This is, mm -hmm. this is the, the, the term yes. that, that we use, collide. Mm -hmm. and, and when they smash one atom into the other, then all the pieces fly around. And then you catch them with a big detector. 
So what we do here, or part of what we do here, is exactly understanding what should we get out of a smashing between atoms. So uh, either here in Lund we do experiments with lasers, yes. and uh, with uh, mathematical mm. physics we can predict what yes. they should observe with this laser, and what happens if you shoot the laser onto an atom. Yes. Then the electron on the atom start jumping yes. around, and we kind of calculate how much jumping do they have to do, or yes. and where do they where do they go? And uh, otherwise, like for example, in this big accelerator in Geneva, they yes. take them and they smash them together in order to find very small components, particles, and yes. components of that. And this also we do yes. because in this corridor we also study yes. nuclear physics, which is the properties yes. of this tiny, tiny little nugget inside the atom. Yes. And uh, this is also quite interesting because the very interesting thing about all of these type of physics or all of these type of science is that even with these very, very, very small components that we are made of, they have a really um, interestingly rich and complicated uh, phenomena that that can that can happen. Very very different things can happen when you when you smash them together, yes. and uh, and really comes down. If you change a very very small details, it changes everything. So for example, these nucleus that we were saying, it's made out of protons and neutrons. So it's a, you can imagine it like a big bowl with two hundred protons and neutrons, and if you add only one more then this big ball becomes like a rugby ball. And if you add another one, it can happen that this rugby ball becomes flat, like a pancake. Yes. So even changing one small component of yes. this ball inside yes. of matter mm. will change the shape. Yes. So we study this kind of stuff mm. with mathematics yes. that you see here. And you are... Yes. But I wonder one thing. Yes. Or I read two things. When you said these things, if one tiny thing changes, it could be a pancake. You said that. So yeah. Yes. That reminds me of the butterfly effect. Yeah, that's a very so, nice question. Sometimes, I don't know, but my dad said this as an example. Like in one land, a tiny butterfly can, fl can fly over the waters of China. And I think he said... In an, he didn't say China, but in another land, yeah. it clearly became a tsunami and destroyed all. But <laughs> if the butterfly didn't fly there, then it couldn't. Then the tsunami didn't happen. Exactly. Mm. With other words, he kind of said this. Now I think it's this how we mean. So that's a, a very interesting question because this is another thing that we study here. It's uh, what you're describing is chaos theory. And this is actually what I teach. So, and, um, and in a chaotic system, yes. what happens is that you can change a very, very small detail, well, but right. then everything happens. Uh, yes. every, uh, everything happens differently yes. later on, evolves along a different path. Mm. So that's something that also happened. And actually Lund was quite uh, famous for connecting this butterfly effect and uh, chaos theory with the quantum physics that I was describing before of atoms mm -hmm. and nuclei. So oh. it's, uh, it's really a, a, a profound thing, mm -hmm. an important thing. So you're saying this, that you, you, I know that part. I can also show it. Okay. I can show you the butterfly effect. Yes. So if you take this, yes. I don't know if this is going to be inside the, if you take this pendulum, for example, yes. So this is a special pendulum which has, um, which has magnets. Yes. On the and if you try to start it into motion. Okay. Yeah. This is too much, but now we will go. So when this will slow down, yes. it will jump around between magnets, and really yes. it's very difficult to predict which magnet will attract the pendulum at exactly which point in time because the position of this pendulum, how this moves, as you can see, it's really 
chaotic. This is the, the yes. proper word of saying chaotic. So if you change a very little detail on this trajectory, it will evolve in a completely different way. So you're saying, in other words, if I stop this, then yes. it will change. But if I still keep moving, then it will... So let's try this. Yes. Try from here. Yes. And you let it go. Okay. Yes. You can You can try if you want. So you try from here, from yes. this point, and you let it go. Okay? And then you see that uh, it goes more or less along these yes, straight see. axis, yes, yes, yes. But, you, but it goes from uh, on mm. these, on these, it never touched that mm. and never touched here. Mm. But if you try again, from a say, you see that the trajectory is completely different. Yes. Even though you tried your best to, to reproduce it as before, mm. the trajectory it goes is completely different. This is chaos uh, in, in, mo in action that you yes. cannot really reproduce yes. twice because the conditions are really different. And that is also why the weather reports are, of, are often not really reliable because mm. a really small, yes. small change in the weather today will have a big impact a month from now. That reminds me of kind of a funny story. My dad, when we were going to school, my dad says that it was going to be very sunny, it would be a little bit cloudy and very much sunny and it's going to be hot outside. So I got a t-shirt and some sh short jeans, I guess, whatever you call them in English. I had them in the entire day, then exactly when it was i don't know two hours or one hours into school when i mean two hours one hour or something three hours when we we're supposed to have a lunch and they go out and play outside on the playground mm -hmm. then it just starts to downright rain everywhere and i get and i get very wet and i wasn't that then when school ended i said to my mommy that the rain, that it rained very much today and it was very cloudy but then my dad, then my mom said that my dad always tries to get the good out of things so I'll be happy but that didn't make me kind of happy because it rained everywhere <laughs> here where you work it's a different kind of classes because my dad is a professor and he was a doctor before so yes. I wonder What's the lowest class? Is that doctor's lowest class? <laughs> so, here at the university, you come and you study at the university. You start yeah. after high school mm -hmm. that uh, your brother is doing high school. So, after that, when you finish that, mm -hmm. um, you start at the university. Mm -hmm. And then you study, you study, you study, you get a degree, a first degree. It's called a bachelor degree. And then, if you want, you can continue. You study again and you get a master degree. And then, if you want, you can continue to study. And at this point, it becomes like a job, because this is what you do every day. So it, it's basically your job to study. And you start to be a researcher. And when you arrive to the point that you have enough of new work done, you have to do something new that nobody else has done before. And when you've done something new that nobody has done before, and it's enough, then... Uh, uh, people like your father, uh, the professor say, okay, this is enough, and you can become a doctor. And then you become a, a doctor in something, for example, in physics. Yes. And if you want, you can continue. And if you continue and you discover enough things and you discover plenty, plenty of other things, you become professor at a certain point. So it's a very long road, very long step of studying yes. stuff and, and discovering new things. I am... Uh... One more question. Pardon me, yeah. I don't need to this. What does it say on your shirt? What does it say on the yes. shirt? I've been waiting. Have you have you read uh, yes. uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Yes. It's a very funny book. It's the story of uh, a whale of a whale that is falling from the sky. Yes. Because when uh, in uh, in quantum mechanics, yes, that is what we study. Many things can happen, yes. and in principle, also almost everything can happen, apart from yes. some boring laws of conservation. So, in this story, for some reason, um, very, very improbable things started to happen. 
and therefore uh, a cloud transforms into a whale. And w- because it's transformed into a whale, it started falling down from the sky mm. and getting consciousness, naming yes. things, and finally splat. Okay. Yes. Hello. Hello. What's your name then? My name is Ludwig. Pleasure to meet you, Ludwig. I'm Andrea. Yes, a pleasure to meet you. So we have here these pictures I showed to your brother. Yes. Do you recognize any of these? Um, it's a bit uh, confusing maybe, but... I think I recognize um, a few of the things. So, for example? Um, the five rings, or... Mm-hmm. Yeah, that um, it says N and E in the middle. Yeah. I have seen that before. I think it's something about electrons. Uh, exactly. That's an atom with yeah. electrons around. Yeah, and uh, protons in the core. Right. Exactly, yes. yeah. In the um, nucleus there are protons. And uh, it's probably it. I, uh, I don't really recognize anything else. Um, but I... Uh, re- recognize some of the words like quantum uh, physics and uh, quantum things it's very small quantum uh, things yeah <laughs> very small um, so on top just below quantum antibody system that's uh, that's a crystal yeah, yeah. so uh, for example if you take um, if you take uh, salt mm-hmm. like yes. kitchen salt then yeah. it's a very famous crystal that's not what what's in the picture but it mm-hmm. doesn't matter yeah, that's yeah, the idea yeah. that you have yeah. a crystal mm-hmm. and on top of the right we have uh, the representation of a nucleus. Oh. So that's the what in, what's inside the, the, yeah. the orbits of the electrons. Yeah. It's a nucleus, and in that case, the nucleus is, is fissioning. It's doing yeah. this nuclear fission, maybe you've heard about, because it's used in nuclear reactors. Yeah, yeah. And then we have a star there. And it looks like a black hole from us. Yeah, almost. Universe. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But it's just a star. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, it's uh, it's UV spectrum yeah, of, yeah. A sp- of a star, I'm not super sure, but it's a star looked yeah. with, with certain wavelength, yeah. with certain light, type of light. Right. And there, at the bottom, we have uh, a conf- some vortices, yeah. configuration of atoms that are put together in order yeah. to make vortices. Yeah. And uh, we have devices that are quantum-sized devices that can yeah. do several yeah. things. And, uh, and on top we have uh, a, a skirmian wave, so it's kind of mag- magnetic wave inside yeah. of a metal that yeah. can happen. And um, so we have all of these, and it's yeah. pretty different stuff, no? Yeah. Yeah. So, but w- what's it? What's to, what's the common theme here? Do you do? Can you very very small? Uh, atoms very very small stuff yeah so yeah. there are there is of course the star for example yeah. that is not small at all no but uh, in general the rest of the representation is small stuff yeah, yeah. and also the star we are, what we're interested in mm. it particular processes yeah. that can be seen yeah. and that um, happen in atoms for yeah. example but so. that's just a larger scale of it that's a, that's a larger scale because there are many, yeah. many, 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 many atoms uh, yeah. boiling mm-hmm. into a star. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but the processes we're interested yes. into, or what gives the colors of stars, yeah. Yeah. it's given by the um, atoms as yeah. well. Or, or, yeah, there is a big story yeah. about it. But, yeah. um, so here we, 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 we kind of study small stuff. That's, that's yeah. a good <laughs> way of putting it. Yeah. So you, you recognize the word quantum. So yeah. The common theme here is that all of these stuff, it's small and behave according to quantum mechanics, so yeah. follows quantum mechanical rules. Yeah. So this is what, uh, what we do in this corridor and, uh, and what we work on. Yeah. So do you have specific questions about uh, some of these? Um, about the devices, it seems kind of interesting uh, how the different devices work and how you use them in uh, to to perform a study. Yeah, that's uh, that's really interesting because it's plenty of applications. Yeah. Of course, uh, this is probably also interesting for you because that's what your father yeah. works on, no? Yeah. That's uh, in particular is a quantum point connection, I think. So it's a, it's a 
it's a device that, that has these two arrows yeah. that converge into a single point with a, a with single atoms. So yeah. you, you you can make a very, very strong electric yeah. field there. And there you can have fun into understanding uh, how energies and temperature and uh, all these effects relate to this device yeah. and how, what's the, for example, what's the maximum uh, efficiency yeah. that such a device can have? What's the maximum conversion between temperature and energy or light? Yeah. So there are these big questions that, that we have to answer. Yeah. And, um, and that's that's precisely what your father is working yeah. on, and that's very important because everything from from tr transistor that make up yeah. my computer yeah. to to our cell phone yeah. it's made up of, of very very tiny devices that yeah. behave according to this quantum mm -hmm. physics rule that are called yeah. transistor yeah. so it's uh, and and what we are trying to do is to build the next generation of this kind of devices yeah. where I heard something about uh quantum uh, device in a computer exactly very quantum fast, computers yeah, for very, example very no? fast computer. so yeah. all of these phenomena that happen at the quantum scale uh, really help in, in, in going and building this yeah. kind of very advanced devices like quantum computers uh, but not only for example uh, nuclei are very important in application for example in reactors or, yeah. or also medicine yeah. So there are several, maybe you have heard of radiotherapy yeah. or hydrotherapy, yeah. that is basically a, a, a bombardment of, of, a, of a tumor, of a cancer yeah. with, a, with an accelerator. Yeah. So you are putting on one end of the accelerator and they bombard you. Yeah. And, uh, and with that, they can penetrate your tissues and go directly hitting the cancer. So that's uh, uh, powerful applications of these very strange phenomena yes very, and very interesting yeah i hope uh, that yeah. is interesting yeah. for 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 people and the interesting thing at least for, at least for me what what's, what's mostly fascinating for me is the fact that these are all very 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 different systems so they are at different scales yeah. because the nucleus is a million times smaller than an atom mm. and a device it's a hundred thousand or hundred times larger than an atom yeah. so you have different scales but the mathematics that you use the, the the formalism and the way that you do calculations is pretty similar across these very vast distances mm. because what's uh, really important is the fact that you have um, quantum objects that are interacting between each yeah. other and exchanging and, and moving around so that's uh, that's really fascinating for me how some simple pieces of math can can talk to different fields and make yeah. us work together. Yeah. That's uh, that's very interesting. How uh, how things that feel so different and look so different probably and uh, works the same mm. in many ways. That is uh, interesting and ho hopefully useful and uh, helpful for people like you told about the cure for cancer and. Uh, with by the bombardment of uh, uh, atoms and so on. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any questions for me um, that you wanted to ask? Uh, I'm kind of interested in what you are working on now, like a project or uh, a study. Or... So um, I am a nuclear physicist, okay. so I treat uh, the top right corner there. Right. Yeah. in a sense, these, these nuclei yeah. that are fissioning. So everything that is made of atoms, mm. uh, the nucleus is the, is the nucleus of mm. the atom. It's, it's what's in the center. It's yes. very small compared yeah. to the atom, but contains 99% of the energy. Yeah. So it's uh, really an important part of matter. And most of the mass that we have comes from the nucleus and from the way nuclei uh, are built, from the, yeah. from the nuclear force that is building up this nuclei. Yes. This is where the mass comes from. Yeah. And um, the nucleus, it's, it's really fascinating for me because atoms and, uh, and uh, transistor devices, many, many things are held together with 
what is called the electromagnetic interaction. Yeah. So whatever you experience as a, as a human being, yeah. so whatever you see, whatever you touch, smell or taste, it's, you do it through the electromagnetic interaction in some yes, sense. Yeah. Of course, what you see, it's, uh, it's light yeah. that is electromagnetic, yeah. but also what you touch at the end of the day is because the atoms that, that are in your hand come into contact with something yeah. and then the atoms in your hand are repulsed by the, the atoms mm. in the something. And that makes also for materials that are softer or harder, how these atoms are into contact with yeah. each other, how they interact and if yeah. they are very bound together. Yeah. So everything you experience is electromagnetic in, in one way or another, but um, nuclei interact, some of their components, the protons that you, that you talked about before, uh, interact with, with this electromagnetic yeah. field, but they are mostly made of nuclear forces that are either nuclear strong or nuclear weak force. And uh, this is what fascinates me a lot because it's kind of another universe that yeah. is opening to us uh, of a completely different field, of a completely different force, because the, the universe is made of four fundamental forces, the two nuclear forces and the electromagnetic force that we talked about, and then we have the gravitational yeah. force. So being able to study these two, it's really interesting for me. And uh, a project that I'm doing right now regards um, nuclear reactions. Mm. So the, the problem is that this nuclear force, we don't know it very well no. because it's, uh, it's kind of new. I mean, yeah. we discovered it roughly uh, 70 years ago, yeah. 80, 90 years ago, depends on where you put yeah. uh, your ideas. While the electromagnetic force, we know it for hundreds of years. Yeah. So. We have a complete theory of electromagnetism since more than a hundred years. But with the nuclear force, that's not the case. So there are, it's still a mystery, big mystery to us. And the only way we can unveil this mystery is, as I was talking to Oscar before, smashing yeah. the uh, matter together mm. and uh, at very incredible force. Mm. And then you have the components flying around mm. and then you catch them and you kind of reconstruct what the nucleus was originally. Yeah. And uh, the problem is that this process is very, very, very complicated mm. because it's, uh, it's many different quantum particles that are interacting and moving around and interacting with the detectors as well. So you have a very complicated process that is difficult to reconstruct. A little bit like a, 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 on the scene of a crime when you have a ballistic mm. uh, uh, investigator that, that, that looks at the uh, trajectories mm. to reconstruct where the shooting was coming yeah. from and how that's very complicated but when the bullets are quantum then it's it's uh, it's an added order of complication yeah. so I'm, I'm trying to doing that i'm a scientific officer for nuclei <laughs> and reconstructing the original nucleus and the information that we can have after we do this uh, these reactions these yeah. nuclear reactions yeah. i think Eller, or i think that the nuclear um, um, reactions can be dangerous, right? Uh, in a few ways, or I mean, the nuclear um, things you work yeah. with in a uh, in a I don't find the word. Yeah. So the idea is that since the nucleus contains ninety percent, ninety eight percent, ninety nine percent of the energy mm. of matter, yeah, it means that uh, if you excited in a proper way, mm. you can extract this energy mm. that you can use in several different mm. ways. And that's uh, the blessing and the curse of, 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 of nuclear physics, that it's connected to very many applications, some of which don't have a, a good reputation, of course, because the use of this energy can be done in several different mm. ways. But uh, the objective of a nuclear physicist more than to use it for some purpose mm. is to understand it yeah. or understand how is it made of. And the only way you can do it is by exploiting mm. this energy density yeah. and trying to, to, to use the accelerators in order to smash uh, nuclei together and trying to, uh, to understand what, it, what, is, what is it made of and, and why it behaves the way it does. So another 
very important things that we do here in Loon is creating new elements. So you know the periodic table yeah, yeah, yeah. of elements. Yes. Then there are few ones that are added from time to time. Yeah, no? yeah. And, uh, and the experimental group in Lund especially, it's very keen into exploring these super heavy, they're really called super heavy elements. Mm. So the, uh, the, the components of the periodic table that are very, very far away, mm. uh, down at the bottom right. Yeah. And, um, and the idea is that you can produce them to get, uh, as much as you smash them together and you, and you kind of destroy the nucleus mm. and make up uh, what is made of, mm. you can also smash them together in order to make bigger ones. Yeah. And then these have different properties and, and you can explore kind of what, um, what is the origin of, uh, of nuclei and, and what, are they what are they made from. Yeah. So the idea is that you need, uh, since they are so energetic, you need a lot of energy to make the nuclei in the first place. And the only place where in the universe where we have this amount of energy are stars mm. or even more exotic, uh, uh, more, more extreme mm. uh, processes in the universe, like supernovae mm. or uh, neutron star mergers, the, the, the collapsing of, of two neutron stars, uh, the collision of two neutron stars mm. that uh, generates all uh, the, the atoms and the elements that you are made of. And, uh, and if when we make the super heavy elements, we understand a little bit better these very extreme processes, how they happen and how are they regulated. So that's also, you have plenty of different uh, perspective you can have about nuclear physics. Yeah. Okay. Do you have other questions? Uh, no, I think the sum is out. Very I, I, I bored you enough. <laughs> no, I, I think it's interesting actually. Um, we're right now in the school actually working with uh, uh, electromagnetic fields and uh, yeah. and uh, physics. So it's very very nice to uh, um, to know very some of these things. Very good. Okay, I hope uh, you enjoyed it, and thank you very much. <laughs> thank for you for doing this, Ludwig.